are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm very happy to be back with you for another episode. So today is episode 16 of Inspirations, my podcast about knitting and yarn dyeing, the yarn that I'm selling in my Etsy shop. So welcome and uh, thank you for joining me again today. Uh, if you are a returning viewer, uh, thank you so much. And if you are a uh, new a viewer welcome and I hope you will uh, enjoy this episode so um, just if you're new you might wonder how all this tricot stitch thing works actually I have an, an Etsy shop that I'm updating once a week on Mondays uh, that's Monday afternoon French time so Paris time and uh, also on Monday afternoons you can find the podcast uh, on my YouTube channel at 5 p.m. Paris time and the newsletter is out every Monday at 5 p.m. as well. The newsletter is important because it's the best way to keep in touch with me, not to, to be sure not to miss anything. So I'm usually presenting the shop update in the podcast, but you don't have to watch the podcast. You can just uh, browse the newsletter to know what's in the shop and if there's anything that you fancy. You know it first because I usually post about the shop update later in the evening uh, to my lovely Instagram followers. But uh, yeah, newsletter peeps get all the fun first. <laughs> so um, also there is a, a monthly cal that you can join as an international uh, knitter. Just have to post a picture on Instagram with this hashtag or uh, post a picture in the Ravelry group in the dedicated thread, discussion thread. And uh, there is, I'm randomly, I'm randomly, sorry, picking a, a winner every, every month. So um, this month, the winner for the uh, monthly cow that's called the FO Fanfare uh, for April is Julie Dilemme on uh, Instagram so she wins thank you Julie for playing along and congr con congratulations <laughs> sorry <laughs> so you win one skin of uh, the uh, sock knitter's almanac colorway for April that's uh, gourmandise on the base of your choice thank you so much for playing along so today uh, I wanted to talk to you about gnomes as a starter for starters gnomes because you know today is a uh, friday may the 7th and today the first clue of the not on just another gnome uh, mystery call uh, pattern dropped a few minutes ago but because i'm translating the pattern to french for sarah shira i have all the clues so i was able to complete clue one and i was eagerly waiting to be you know able to share with with you guys so that's the first thing we're going going to to see together then i'm going to talk to you about Webgo and all the red thread uh project that i have going on uh spoilers not much to see there <laughs> i'm afraid and uh, then there will be a bit of enabling and new things to show you um afterwards i'm going to talk about the the shop uh, more specifically because there will be a little rearrangement of dates in the uh, programmed shop update themed shop update that I uh, talked about in previous episodes I'm going to take you through this uh, then I'm going to talk about the advent calendar I know that you are several awaiting the news about the advent calendar so we're going to talk about that today and then I'm going to talk to you about the shop update this week. It's all about the Rocket Tea by Tennis Lavalle. Lots of kits in the shop. And I'm going to wrap today's episode with uh, a new blog post about my Ravelry crochet. There are so many <laughs> over the past few days. I've had so many crushes over the past few days. I just can't wait to share them with you. I'm not going to share everything with you in the podcast, but I'm just going to point you to uh, the blog post that I prepared. Okay, so let's talk about gnomes. Um, so this is a mystery call. So if you don't want to be spoiled because chances are, I mean, you had the weekend to, you know, uh, work on your gnome. Maybe you haven't uh, finished already the first clue. So if you don't want to be spoiled, please don't look. So again, the yarn I'm using is my uh, 
the kit I dyed just for this uh, mystery car. It's the Gnome des Blés, and you have Lucy's Fave, uh, Magic Dust, and Natural and Dyed. And so uh, I'm using those three colors. This is for the hat, this will be for the body, and this will be for the, for the, for the beard. And here is clue one. Here is clue one. And it's a gnome with cables. Cables and texture. So you have this lovely textured stitch here and gorgeous cables here and here. So clue two is arriving tomorrow for you guys. Uh, it's it will be Tuesday, uh, May the 11th for me. So I'm just going to, you know, keep on knitting. And I think I will be sharing next week. I will be sharing Clue 2 and 3 with you guys because Clue 3 drops on Saturday, next Saturday. So uh, if you will be watching this next Monday, uh, Clue 3 will already have dropped. So I will be able to share my progresses with you. Yes. So there is still some... Uh, there are still some um, kits in the shop. Uh, I have two colors left in the shop for this particular gnome. Uh, if you want to jump aboard, uh, feel free. There are still some... Uh, I, I'm looking uh, sideways because uh, actually the past week has been a bit complicated. Uh, we had a COVID alert uh, in the family. Um, fortunately, it was negative. My oldest... My eldest daughter was tested and it was negative, but baby Amelia and Ambre, her bigger sister, her big sister were a bit, you know, under, under the weather and uh, baby Amelia is not in daycare, has not been in daycare for a few days now and Ambre was not at school as well. So I'm, I'm just filming the podcast in the same room as baby Amelia. She's currently sleeping on the couch. She's been sleeping for almost two hours now so there is a big big chance that she will, she's going to wake up and I'm going to finish the podcast with her on my knee okay <laughs> you have to adapt okay <laughs> so that's it for the gnome no but we go so we go uh, it's an initiative that originates from cross stitch from uh, Jessie Marie makes stuff I think uh, I adapted it to knitting because I do cross stitch but I prefer knitting <laughs> and uh, the idea is to uh, have two numbers uh, drawn each month uh, on something that looks like very much like a bingo card and uh, for each number you have an associated project that you work on okay <laughs> is everything okay everything has fallen down um you have an uh, i have actually an, an unfinished uh project that i want to make progress on so if you watched last month episode uh, where i you know uh, talked about this I had to finish my Western Wanderer, <coughs> okay, and knit my Christmas mittens. <clears throat> okay, so none of that. <laughs> there was nothing, nothing happened on that front. On both fronts, actually, nothing happened. So one thing happened, I just took my Westfield Wanderer, um, noticed that I made a mistake and had to um, frog a row, two rows. I frogged those rows and that's it. So, I mean, it's even smaller than it was. <laughs> okay. Um, and the Christmas mittens, do I have to explain you why nothing happened? I mean, even if I didn't have the time, it was really not the period at which I feel like knitting Christmassy things. So, but I read something, you know, guys, uh, that you shouldn't say that you don't have the time. You should say it's not a priority for me. So that's it. I'm, I'm going to stop saying I don't have the time. I mean, I have all the time in the world when things are priorities. So clearly knitting my Westfield Wanderer and knitting the Christmas, the Christmas mitts were not priorities. 
clearly not. And you might have noticed, if you're very observant, that some of the uh, things here, uh, the boxes, have been lined in orange. Well, guys, that means that everything that's in orange, like, it's going to be knit by a simple knitter. Yes! <laughs> so my Webco grid is, a bit, is going to be completely, not, not completely, but lighter, much, much lighter. So, about this month, the numbers are 19, so 19 and 22. 22 for me, that's, that's the pinkish boxes. So that's um, some mitts that I started to test out a new base for the shop. And a shawl that I started, it's Tales of the Isle of Perfect. That's a pattern that I adore. I already knitted one in Baram U uh, colorway still. If you're curious, you can find all the information on my Ravelry project page. Pro projects page. Um, and I took this project out. So the first one is this one. So that's a simple, you know, mid that I started. I wanted it a bit loose, so I didn't need much. But uh, yeah. You see the you see the idea. I wanted something covering the cuff like this, and I almost need to be you know uh, increasing for the thumb here. So something pretty, yes, something really simple. I wanted to you know test the base, two new bases for the shop. It was a new decay that I called the petit decay. But actually, the test was conclusive. The base came in the shop, was sold, and that's it. <laughs> and this remains. And then that's uh, moe hand silk that I love. So the two together are absolutely lovely. I love uh, the fabric knitted up. It's just not a priority. And the other project, I mean, this one has strong good vibes very strong it's very strong with this one so the shawl tales by uh, tales of the isle of purbeck was a mystery call from a few years back by a designer by annie claire and it's a lovely oliver lace pattern but very simple to knit beautiful um I knitted one already. This is my second one. I love that pattern. I love this one, this yarn. That's a uh, alpaga, a very big, big uh, skin of alpaga that I I bought when I went to Rhinebeck in 2016. So yeah, that souvenir yarn at, at its peak. I'm just loving this big ball of fluff. It's very hairy, very, very soft, out of this world soft. It's incredibly soft. Uh, I don't remember the all the, uh, you know, the info. I think everything is on my Ravelry page as well. I just know that it was uh, quite local alpacas. Uh, in I don't know from where exactly, I don't remember, but it's complete souvenir yarn because it was one of the biggest trips that I took. Uh, I went with friends, we had such a blast, it was fantastic, we visited New York City afterwards, it was awesome, completely awesome. So this one has really, really strong positive vibes and I might just, you know, resume knitting on it because just for that, I can use the positive vibes, I mean, everyone can right now. <laughs> so that's it for Whipgo. For me, so slight chance of seeing some progress on that because yeah, the projects are really awesome. <sighs> so next on the agenda for today is I'm sorry, I need to. Yes, so my project, my I'm, I'm calling them red thread projects because it's. The literal translation of fil rouge, projet fil rouge. That means the project that I, on which I'm working on 
during the whole year. I'm stalling. I haven't made any progress. The only progress that I did is actually on my cross stitch on the Animal Almanac by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I didn't, you know, do the little um, montage because I'm not finished yet for the month of March. Um, I didn't do many sessions of cross stitch this month because I was too busy but I should have because it's kind of like um, it's very close to meditating for me and it helps me managing my stress so I really should stick to it even and even more when, when I have a lot of work to do oh baby okay I think she wakes up she's waking up just I'll be back and she's back to sleep and she's waking up. I don't know, guys. Okay, I'll start. Uh, I'll continue. Be a um, Yeah, no much project. Not not much done. This is yeah. Costage is like meditating. So I should really stick to it, even more when I have a lot of work and uh, when I'm under stress. And I've been this week because <laughs> because she was home. I was not able, obviously, to be working as I. Well, I am normally uh, working because she needs looking after. She's small, she's only three. And uh, yeah, having her around makes like working not the same. Tu peux dire bonjour? Non? Okay, okay, I'm taking a break this time. <laughs> okay, because I am a pro at multitasking, I'm going to keep on <laughs> with my baby on my lap. Um, so, uh, I don't remember what I was saying. I believe I told you I did a bit of cross stitching. I showed you the cross stitch and I told you I didn't make any progress on my red thread projects. And that's it, basically. Uh, then I wanted to show you a bit of enabling because I mean, I might just might have splurged at Lucy Look at Slant again, but nothing to show for it because it hasn't arrived yet. So that will be for another episode. But this is again on Lucy's, <laughs> that's all Lucy's fault because I saw it in her podcast. And it's a beautiful hand uh, carved crochet hook made from a twig. How cool is that? With a little mushroom at the end. I mean, I mean, it's so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. And um, it's a four millimeter. I just don't have a project to uh, work on at the time. And I, I ordered this little cutie as well. That's a stitch marker. And the shop is called Simple Natural Handmade. And that's backwards, but uh, yeah, trust me on that. <laughs> So um, I didn't see that. It's silver birch and four millimeters. Is it going to focus? No, it's not focusing. Oh yes, it is. Good boy. So that's it for the enabling. Nothing else. I mean, but it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's gorgeous. I just want to crochet everything now. I just have to find a four millimeters um, project. If you have any suggestions, Please let me know. I'm looking for something, uh, I don't know, maybe a gnome, maybe something cute. Um, okay, so now I'm going to talk about the shop update. So uh, initially the plan was to have uh, an Imabo restock on the 17th of May and then some kits for the Jimmy Shawl, which is... This. So that's this pattern that you get for free when you subscribe to the newsletter. Um, so I'm going to push it back a, a bit uh, because uh, the first uh, uh, shop update of the month was very successful and I have, I actually uh, updated my dyeing program, my dyeing schedule actually and um, yeah, I will not be done dyeing uh, the Jimmy kits uh, for the 24th of May and there is another uh, thing 
it's that uh, my main supplier, yarn supplier, is experiencing uh, difficulties uh, with, uh, you know, getting the yarn back in stock. So I am going to experience difficulties having uh, all your favorite bases in stock. So I decided to, you know, um, I mean, that's an opportunity to go explore uncharted territories, uh, uncharted yarn territories. So I'm just going to, you know, see uh, what new bases I can uh, discover with you guys and offer. So, okay, just to say that extra fin fingering is going to be rare for the f for the next uh, couple of months, I think. Um, there is not much left in the shop. I've, um, you know, reduced all the pre-orders already opened in the shop for the extra fin fingering to take into account the leftover stock that I have already with me and uh, I, I'm not taking on e any other pre-orders uh, on that base uh, s until I have a restock of my own. So that's why that's, that's pushing back uh, the uh, Jimmy um, update a bit. But fear not, I have plans and I have already, uh, you know, planned for the update accordingly. So the new date for the Jimmy Kids update is the 7th of June and it will be just after the uh, colorway reveal for the month of June. Uh, so that's going to be on the 31st of May. Uh, the June colorway for the Sock Knitters on Manac will be on the 31st of May. Um, I don't know that, I, I don't think uh, the extra fin figuring base will be available in June. Uh, I will have something else uh, as you know your go-to yarn base for socks but uh, all the other yarns I think will be in stock that should be okay but uh, yeah extra fin fingering I think it's going to be tough yeah for the next month and a half I think. Um, yeah, so that's it. And then I wanted to talk to you about the advent calendar. So the advent calendar is going to uh, happen. I wasn't sure until very recently because you've been uh, several to ask me to do one. But it's a big project for an indie dyer, an advent calendar. It's a big investment. It's a big risk. It's uh, a big challenge. So that's quite big. And I'm still a little one. <laughs> I'm still little. So yeah, I I mean, I thought about it long and hard. I wasn't sure. Uh, on top of that, there's been really lots of issues about minis uh, being out of stock and things like that. So um, I, I decided I'm going to offer uh, an advent calendar, but I need you guys to tell me if that would be interesting for you, if you would be interested in ordering one from me. Just because I know I'm going to do it, but I don't know how many I'm going to prepare. So that depends entirely on you and you telling me if you are, or you would be interesting in one, interested in one. So I'm going to give you a few uh, information about what is going to be, what it's going to be like for Trico Stitch without, 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 you know, uh, telling you too much. But there will be two options for the advent calendars by me. So the first option will be 24 mini skins of yarn, one pattern to use the 24 mini skins of yarn. So uh, the yarn will be dyed following one single uh, inspiration source. So they will be all coordinated and you will be able to use them all in one project that will only be a suggestion the pattern will be exclusive to the advent calendar um, it will be only a suggestion you you won't have to use it there i mean there is a lot of beautiful patterns designed to uh, use advent calendars minis but you will have one trico stitch option as well in the calendar and then you will have goodies I'm not going to be very specific about that because I'm still 
I, I have ideas. Uh, I plan on, uh, you know, having uh, some, maybe some notions, some things like that. But I still need to uh, decide exactly what I'm going to put in the in the calendar. But you will have some goodies. Um, and then the second option will be all that plus one full skin of yarn coordinated with the minis. There will be some variegated colors. There will be some more semi-solid colors. Uh, it's going to be a mix of those different colors. And uh, yes, so the prices will be 139 euros for the first option. So that's only the 24 minis, the goodies and the pattern. And then if you want to add the full, the full skin on top, it will be 159 euros. Um, for countries like Spain, um, so that's Spain, uh, Luxembourg, Belgium and the Netherlands, it will be free shipping via Mondial Relais. And just let me check for... I just have a doubt. Um, and it will be free shipping also for uh, Germany, um, Italy, Portugal, and. and oh, I, <laughs> uh, Austria. Austria. I, I, I'm always having difficulties remembering. The name of that country in English is always in German in my head. I don't know why. So uh, free shipping for uh, Belgium, Luxembourg, um, Spain, the Netherlands, uh, Germany, Italy, Portugal and Austria. And uh, I mean, for if you choose the uh, 159, so the one with the full skin on top, it's free shipping for basically everyone. Okay, so that's it for the Calendrier de l'Avent Advent Calendars. So let me know if you were interested. Uh, I mean, it, it will help me uh, decide on how many I'm going to offer this year. Thank you so much. Okay, now I want to talk to you about this uh, shop update. It's going to be uh, a shop update dedicated to the Rocket Tea pattern by Tanis Lavalle. I'm wearing mine. I cannot show it to you right now. I'm going to show it to you just in a bit. Um, I love this pattern. I, I've knitted it last year. I'm wearing it a lot. Um, you need for, I think, two thirds of the sizes, you need only one skin of fingering white down and one skin of uh, mohair and silk in less weight uh, to complete the comp the the the, the tea. and it's a uh, and pat a pattern that is very easy to knit very clear very well written and uh, there is i love all the uh, every uh, every edge is finished with an eye cord so it's really really it's a very good pattern i love it um, so I prepared a little video for you guys to discover all the rocket teas that I will have in, sh in the shop on Monday because there are so many that I thought it would be maybe uh, more interesting for you guys to see them like this instead of me showing them at the, uh, to the screen because I mean I have a quite a, a quantity this time. Hi guys, so here's a little tour of the rocket tea kits that you will find in the shop on, on Monday. So I have quite a bit to show you and I thought it would be more easier to show them to you while uh, they are all on the table like this instead of uh, uh, bringing them uh, to the camera uh, each in turn. So uh, this one is very soft and uh, uh, very bright at the same time. It's Autumn Rainbow on BFL fingering. It's a heavily variegated colorway, but uh, really beautiful that I paired with Lucy's Fave, one of my latest colorways that I dyed for the, um, initially was dyed for the uh, Not Another Gnome uh, kits. Then I have Que de la Goule, uh, on both extra fine fingering and mohair and silk. 
uh, I have two kids. Well, for, to need the racket tee, uh, depending on your size, you will need one or two kids, but you will find all the info uh, on the listing. Here you have the Almanac colorway for the month of May. That's um, Snapdragon uh, both on Stellina fingering. So there's a little bit of sparkle here. And I dyed quite a bit of Stellina because I think it's a perfect, perfect um, yarn for, for, this, uh, for this particular pattern, the Rocket T by Tanis Lavallee. Actually, mine is knitted in uh, Stellina and uh, Mohan silk, so exactly both those bases. And I love it. And I love that the Stellina is very sleek and uh, yeah, it has beautiful drape and uh, it's perfect for that pattern. So Stellina and Mohair and Silk Snapdragon. Then I have the same combination on uh, Crazy Witch. Again, heavily variegated, but uh, I think the Rocket T is lends itself to heavily variegated yarn uh, because the stripes actually break any pooling and um, the variegated yarn uh, on mohair and silk once caked up and knitted up looks less variegated because you see that colorway that's dreamy era and that's this one so you can see it's yeah not so heavily you know variegated after all <laughs> So you will have your Dreamy Ara both on Stellina and um, Mohan Silk. And there you have something very bright that I love. It's Lucky on Lurex fingering and Paddy on Mohair and Silk. So that's a, really a statement, a bold statement color. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so that's that was the uh, almanac colorway for the month of March. There you have the almanac colorway for the month of February. That was lueur. So you have lueur on extra fine fingering uh, together with lueur on mohair and silk, which is absolutely gorgeous. Love it. And then the almanac uh, colorway for the month of January. That um, nuit d'hiver on lurex. And on Moir and Silk. Uh, I didn't dye Gourmandise, which is the Almanac colorway for uh, April, but uh, you have almost all the colorways of the Almanac. Uh, here is a new colorway I called Hello Gorgeous because that's, that's just what it is, just gorgeous. So uh, both on Moir and Silk and uh, Stellina fingering. Over there we have different bases. This time it's MCN, so that's Minre on MCN and Minre, the same color on Siri and Silk. Uh, slightly less yardage here, so you, you, you will want to check how many kits you will need for your size. Um, there I have something truly luxurious, that's MCN, that's a exhaustion colorway, so it doesn't have a name yet, but it will have soon. Uh, so that's MCN paired with absolute fluffiness, that is the um, cashmere and silk, it's gorgeous. And the colorway is Sous l'Océan. I have two kits for those. Uh, here you have uh, another one of the colorways that I dyed for the Not Another Gnome pattern. So that's Hint on Moher and Silk and on Single, Extra Fine Single. So 100% uh, Merinos, Extra Fine Merinos Superwash. I have three. There you have Rosé, which is a very delicate and dusty pink. Uh, both on Exafin fingering and mohair and silk. And here you have something very close, but that's actually an exhaustion colorway, so not repeatable. And it's on single. I don't think. Yes, it has a name. Lovely thing. That's true. Uh, and on Syrian silk. There, there I have something very bright. That's Min Paluzza on extra fine fingering and on Suri and Silk. And there I have some, there are just, there's just one kit available of, for each. So that's Bourbon on extra fine fingering and that's paired with an exhaustion colorway called Golden Hour. Lovely, uh, you know, delicate shade of yellow. Well, 
orange. And there you have again Bourbon on extra fine fingering, and this time it's paired with a variegated mohair, which is called blueberry something. Um, then I have two of this new colorway called Reef, so that's on mohair and silk, and on single. Um, I have two also of this one that's Lone Peak, a gorgeous blend of blues and greys with a dash of yellow, fluorescent yellow, and Long Night Dark Blue on BFL. Uh, that one, I love it. It's Ecorse on Extra Fine Fingering and Dark and Moody on um, Siri and Silk. There you have Until Down 2.0, that's on Moher and Silk, and Stellina fingering. And then you have again Moher and Silk, that's Until Down 2.0, and that's Heat Wave on Extra Fin fingering. That is a lovely speckled light purple. Then I have four of these. So this is a new colorway, which is only speckles, and it's called Carnaval. And I paired it with an exhaustion colorway on Syrian silk that is called Petit Mot, lovely uh, shade of pink. And the last four kits I want to share with you are um, those ones, so it's always the same fingering weight color, that's Pierre, Vieille Pierre, which is actually uh, the background color for Lueur. And I decided to pair Vieille Pierre with different shades of Moher and Silk. So you have Silver Lining, Fearless Dawn, Rosé, and Lueur. And that's it guys, here it is, the update for Monday. I hope you like it. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I think I'm going to be able to finish now. So I'm sorry, I cannot show you my rocket tea uh, because I think little baby Amelia has, is almost back to sleep on me. <laughs> but that's okay because I was almost done anyway. I trust me if I tell you that this pattern is great and not the colorway. If you're wondering, is Dreamyara. And I used Stellina fingering uh, paired with Mohan silk. And it's gorgeous and I'm wearing it a lot. Um, another great pattern that you can knit with any two of my uh, kits is the latest pattern by Leila Raven, which is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's this pattern, it's a very big shawl uh, with a bit of te texture and a bit of, of, of lace for the border and I love it. I, I, I'm pretty much in awe of um, Leila Raven's designs. Uh, she's one of my favorite designers. And I love all the clean lines and simplicity and, uh, and beautiful patterns all over. And uh, so her new pattern has just been published and she is publishing it as a, as a, a part of a collection with Françoise Danois, Aroa Knits. And um, actually I've seen quite a number of very beautiful patterns lately that I wanted to share with you. So if you want to see uh, what pattern caught my eyes lately, you can head over to my blog. Uh, the link is in the show notes and I prepared another one of my uh, Ravelry Crushes uh, blog post for you guys. And actually I've, I've really, I mean, I've been using those posts uh, quite a lot lately. Just when I'm, you know, looking for inspiration, uh, looking to see what caught my eyes in the previous weeks, for example. Uh, sometimes I can go a long stretch of time without really being inspired by something I saw on Ravelry. And sometimes, I mean, it happens like this week I've seen like uh, six or seven patterns that I really love and I, that I would like to knit. So, yeah. 
I gathered all the info on that blog post if you fancy to give it a try and uh, and that's it for this week guys <clears throat> sorry for the slightly uh, you know uh, chopped <laughs> version of the podcast thank you for staying with me until the end and uh, I wish you a lovely a lovely week I'll see you next Monday bye bye